In this video, I'll be investigating what has been commonly known as the LBL Massacre. I want to be clear, just because this topic is very different from my other videos does not mean that I'll give up my evidence and logic-based approach. The gist of the LBL Massacre story is that a family of four was killed by some sort of werewolf or dogman type creature while they were camping. I'll refer to this creature as a dogman because that's the term that's commonly used. Many of the people that state this attack has actually happened say that there was some sort of cover-up and that's why there is no news stories or other sort of available proof. For those of you who don't know, LBL refers to the land between the lakes area. It's a large peninsula that spans both Tennessee and Kentucky. The government cover-up claim doesn't really hold water in my opinion. There were dogman sightings in Wisconsin and this did result in actual news coverage. If you'd like to know more about these Wisconsin sightings, search for the Beast of Bray Road. My point is that even if some shadowy government agency tried to cover up the brutal deaths of four people, there would be still some sort of evidence that these people actually died. This is an actual news story of a man who went missing and was found dead in the LBL area. I'm not saying that this is a government cover-up, but this is what I would expect a cover-up would look like. The bare minimum of facts were given, and any details about the man's death were suspiciously left out. It's normal for law enforcement not to release details during the early stages of an investigation. However, I consider it somewhat suspicious that after all these years, no more details have been released. It's entirely possible that this alleged LBL massacre is either fabricated or an urban legend based on an actual event. Without any hard evidence or verifiable facts, it'd be hard to distinguish a scary campfire story from an actual event. However, there are some dogman attack stories that we can prove are fictional. The top story involves some students who went camping with a VW microbus and were allegedly attacked by the dogman. There are no news stories about this, there is no one willing to state that this actually happened, and there is no one that is willing to come forward with pictures of the alleged damage to the van. This is clearly just a scary campfire story. Likewise, the bottom story is a version of the alleged attack on the family of four. The reason why I can say that this story is fictional is because of the names of the children were mentioned in the story. This made it possible for me to determine that there was no evidence that the children that matched this description had actually died. There have been people that have come forward and stated that an attack on the family of four has actually happened. A couple of these examples would be Jan Thompson and a man simply known as Roger. Jan said she heard about the attack from two of the responding officers. Roger claims he was actually there during the attack. This is a chart from a different channel, Wolfka Outdoors, that I have permission to use. The chart compares the statements of different folks who stated that the LBL attack did happen. Jan's and Roger's statements contradict each other in a key place, the location of the young female victim. Because there can only ever be one version of the truth, logically someone must be lying or is factually wrong. This chart obviously demonstrates that none of the accounts match up as they should. I believe that this is evidence that the LBL attack did not happen. If this was a real event, one would expect that there would be no major variation within the details of the story. In comparison, it's common for urban legends to have such variations. Let's say you have five different accounts of an animal attack. None of the accounts really match and you have no real evidence that the attack actually took place. Why would you believe such an attack really happened? In conclusion, I believe that the evidence suggests that this attack on a family of four never took place. However, I was not there and I do not have ironclad evidence such an attack did not happen. I want to be clear that Wolfka Outdoors has reached a different conclusion than I have. He believes that the Dogman accounts on the chart are genuine, and the reason that there are differing accounts is because there was more than one family of four that was killed. I welcome differing opinions, but I respectfully disagree with him. I would encourage you to watch his videos if you find my reasoning lagging and you want to have a different opinion on the subject. One more thing, actual incidents sometimes spawn urban legends. There's a documentary called Cropsey. 
It details the startling realization that an urban legend turned out to be directly based on a person who was an actual menace to society. Almost all of the accounts that claim a family was attacked in LBL say that this attack took place during the 1980s, and I believe that there is a reason for this. There were bodies that were found during the 1980s in LBL. Two girls were killed in a gruesome manner, and the killer was never found. I wonder if this very real tragedy and the resulting police presence may have somehow led to the current Dogman Massacre story. This is a random Redditor talking about the Dogman Massacre story, so feel free to take it with a grain of salt. I wanted to include this because it shows a very interesting blurring of the lines between actual murders and the story about a family being killed in the LBL campground. It makes me wonder if during the very beginning of the police investigation, before any information was officially released, that there were some rumors going around about a family getting killed. Such rumors could have easily been the very beginning of an urban legend about a dogman attack. If you want to keep reading this, pause the video now because I'm going to move on. This is a quote from a story that was posted on Reddit by J. Thompson 1. It is Jan Thompson's alleged personal dogman encounter. Obviously Jan Thompson wrote it herself. I have no doubt that because of the way that this is expertly written, it is purely fiction. In my opinion, this story is written to invoke fear. It does not seem like a person that is recalling a traumatizing incident. If you haven't finished reading it, pause the video now because I'm going to move on. What is also very revealing is what happened when someone said he didn't believe Jan Thompson's story right to her face. Instead of defending her story, she decided to call it quits and leave the so-called cryptid community. This is according to Barton Nunnally himself, who described how this happened during the filming of his documentary, Hunt the Dogman. I managed to contact the previously mentioned alleged dogman survivor named Roger via the YouTube comments section. I stated that I was trying to do some research to verify what he had said. I found it quite strange that his default answer is that the encounter needs no verification. This sort of implies that we are just supposed to believe him. I think a much more believable response would be something like, I can't verify the details because of privacy reasons, but my story is true whether you believe it or not. On a side note, part of the Dogman attack story is a moment when someone finds a body in a tree. In most versions of the story, it's a young female victim. Sometimes it's a slain dogman. Either way, the reason that they find the exact location of the body is because blood cinematically drips down onto someone from above, and they look up in horror. First of all, this is a common horror movie trope. Second of all, canids like wolves and dogs don't carry their kills up into trees. It would make much more sense if this was some sort of leopard creature, because leopards do bring their kills up into trees. Finally, I want to be clear, I have nothing against Roger or Jan or anyone else. I didn't make this video out of a misplaced desire to create a pointless YouTube drama. I've also come to the conclusion that Roger seems like a nice guy. He was polite and he didn't take it personally when I said I didn't believe his story. I'll be posting some links to some interesting videos in the description section. I also want to say that I'm tempted to make other videos about a certain out of the ordinary topics that have significantly more evidence and plausibility than this one. 